hour for another Inner Sanctum mystery and remind you to... I'd like you to meet some new guests we've just dug up. Now, that peculiar cadaver standing off the corner by himself has a serious case of claustrophobia. Mm -hmm. Poor stiff. He just can't stand shrouds. <laughs> now, this fellow to your right was a mountain climber in life. He took his wife on an alpine hike, and while they were going up an icy slope, he cut the rope that held them together. Said he just couldn't stand being tied to one woman. And now, meet our most forgettable character, Wild-Eyed Willie. One day, Willie's ugly wife bit him. So, in anger, he buried her in the backyard. Six months later, his homely mate came up as a dogwood tree to haunt him. Now, according to Willie, her bark is much worse than her bite. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, The Vengeful Corpse, was written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan, and stars Barbara Weeks in the role of Sarah, with Carl Swenson as Paul. Inner Sanctum is presented by the Emerson Drug Company of Baltimore, Maryland, makers of Bromo Seltzer. Remember, Bromo Seltzer is compounded by registered pharmacists. It fights headache three ways. Bromo Seltzer helps your headache quickly, pleasantly, and it also soothes the upset stomach and jangled nerves that may team up with it. No wonder druggists report that of all headache products dispensed to their fountains, the overwhelming favorite is Bromo Seltzer. Please, friends, absolute silence. We want it so quiet you can hear a head drop. In the small hillside New England cemetery, a chill evening wind stirs the leafless trees with a complaining murmur. A blood-red moon probes through the branches with grotesque fingers, touching the faded headstones with their eerie light. The frail, drawn-faced young woman sits on an old stone bench, listening acutely to the rustling of the branches, as if to capture some word whisper of the dead, forgotten past. voice on the wind, and it called me to come out here. That's just in your mind, darling. No voice called you. Yes, Paul, it did. I recognized the voice. You recognized it? Then whose voice was it, dear? It was old and tired and sort of cracked. And yet I could recognize it as my own voice. You heard your own voice? Yes, Paul. And it was strongest right here where I'm sitting now. Among my family graves. Hello, Willie. Call that voice. Hello. It's just Mr. Griffin, the caretaker. I asked him to help me look Hello. for you. Oh, well, I see you found your wife all right, eh, Mrs. Seaton? Yes, I found her, Mr. Griffin. I thought I saw Mrs. Seaton come to the graveyard here earlier. I didn't expect she'd still be... Oh, well, what's wrong? Oh, it's... What's the matter, Mr. Griffin? Just that I get sort of a funny kind of feeling every time I pass this grave here. What do you mean? What are you talking about? That grave, that one there, the one right next to you. Why? What's the matter with it? Well, ain't you notice there's only one name on the headstone? The, the first name, Hester. That's strange. My family name is Randolph. Wasn't this woman a Randolph? Oh, you don't know the story. Uh, what story are you talking about? Uh, the kin who buried this Hester woman didn't think she deserved the family name, so they left it off the headstone. Why? Why didn't they give Hester her full name? Because they didn't want anybody to know who she was, I guess. You see, Hester was burned at the stake for witchcraft. 
witchcraft? Uh, that's what they say. Uh, Mr. Griffin, my wife is an old woman as it is. Let husband. him go on, Paul. No, but Sarah... What I... else, Mr. Griffin? Well, that's all, Mrs. Seaton, except that Hester claimed that the stake that they were burning an innocent woman, she could be heard shouting it as the flames licked around her. She threatened with her last breath to get even someday. How could she get even? I don't know, but... According to the story I heard, Hester said that this here town owed her the years of her life that they took away. Well, now, this is completely ridiculous. It's only a Mr. legend. Mr. Griffin, no... tell me, how many years ago did all this happen? Well, it, it's right here on the headstone, you see. Hester, a lost soul, born October the 13th, 1759, died. Good heavens. What's wrong? Well, look, Mrs. Seaton. The date of Hester's death. It's worn away. Sarah? Yes, yes, Paul. What are you doing out of bed? When did you get up? Why, just a minute ago, I... I can't sleep. She keeps calling me. I hear her voice right here in this room. Just, just a few minutes. What? She was begging me to help her, telling me she never really lived and pleading with me to bring her back to life. No, Sarah. You... I thought I saw her. No, Sarah, believe me. She was did... dressed in a black dress and there was a large W on it. That's the witch. And in her hand, she held a flaming torch. I'm going to call the doctor, darling. This is not... Someone's at the door. All right, I'll see who it is. No, wait, wait. I'll go. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Seaton. Why, Judge Foster. I hope I didn't awaken you folks. I saw a light in the windows. Oh, so that's I... all right, Judge. Come right in. Ah, thank you. I'm sorry to bother you this time of the night, Mr. Seaton, but I was looking out of my window on the other side of the cemetery, and I thought I saw something or someone prowling around out there, and I wondered if they come over this way. Who was it? Well, I don't know. Someone carrying a torch. A torch? Uh, go on, Judge. Well, of course, it could be that my eyes were playing tricks on me. They're not so good. But uh, as far as I could make out, it was a woman dressed in black. Paul. You saw this woman, Judge? You're sure? Well, I'm pretty sure I saw her. Of course, it's kind of dark out there, but it looked to me like there was something on the front of her dress. What? What do you mean? Well, there was the letter W. A big white letter W on it. It was Hester, just as No, I... no, Sarah. Hester? Who's Hester? Hester Randolph. That's who you saw. She was in this house, No, too. it must be a trick. You see, someone is trying to frighten you to make you worse. Now, now, hold on, folks. Hester Randolph was buried over a hundred years ago. She's come back to life. Mrs. Seaton. Uh, Judge, my wife is ill. She doesn't realize what she's saying. I know Hester's alive. You didn't believe me, Paul, but Judge Foster saw her, too. Well, I didn't see anybody who's been dead a hundred years. What is it, Judge? Don't you smell it? Yes. Something burning. This is the odor of burning flesh. Look. Out there on the back lawn. Stuck in the earth. A torch. A flaming torch. <laughs> Sarah, I tell you, it's useless to have me dig up this crane. I've got the note, Paul. It's the only way I'll be sure. Now, careful, Mr. Seaton. You're just about deep enough for the coffin now, if it's still there. Judge, I don't know how you can sanction a thing like this. Well, Mr. Seaton, you see, I want to be sure, too. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, you've struck wood with the shovel. Yes, it's the coffin, all right. You better go easy now. That wood is soft with age and half rotted away. Now, I think we can open it now. Wait, I'll give you a hand with the lid. All right. There's something inside it. The body. Charred. It's a body, all right. Only it isn't a woman's. You can still make out the face. It's Griffin, the caretaker. <laughs> Dr. Norton, I am so glad that you've gotten here. I came as soon as I could, Mr. Seaton. What's wrong? She's worse, Doctor. Oh? Much worse. Been in her room all day, hiding like a frightened child. I, I think the me uh, reading made her worse. Reading? What reading? Well, for the past few days, she's been reading books about her family history. Why did you let her have them? Well, because at first, they seemed to quiet her. 
since the night we found Mr. Griffin's body in that grave, she's wanted to know more and more about Hester Randolph. Paul. Oh, Sarah. Uh, Dr. Norton's here, dear. You, you've got to warn him, Paul, before it's too late. Warn who, Mrs. Seaton? Judge Foster. He's in danger. Hester will kill him next. What? It's in the records of the court. The magistrate who sentenced Hester to death at the stake was a man named Foster. Now, Mrs. Seaton, you're just upset. Please, believe me. Judge Foster is a direct descendant of that magistrate. Sarah, Sarah, Hester's dead, dear. The dead can do no harm. Oh, Paul, you look like a pet. She's killed one man already, and now she's going to kill another. She swore she'd get that revenge on the magistrate and on the man who was her accuser. Mrs. Seaton, all this took place over a hundred years ago. Then what about Mr. Griffin? Well, what do you mean, Sarah? He had the same name, too. According to the record, Hester's accuser was a man named Richard Griffin. So, Judge Foster, my wife insisted that I come over here and warn you about Hester. Well, thank you, Mr. Seaton, for troubling, but I'm not a bit worried about the similarity of names. Well, I didn't admit it to Sarah, but the... Coincidence with Griffin was strange. Well, the dead never frightened me, Mr. Seaton. But thank you for coming over. Oh, by the way, can I drive you home? No, thanks. Dr. Norton is waiting for me outside. Good night. Good night, Mr. Seaton. Now, oh, where did I put those glasses of mine? Oh, sure, I left them here on the table. Wait. Say, who opened that door? Is that you come back, Mr. Seaton? But confound it, whoever it is, answer me. Who's out there? What? Who, who is it? What? Who, who are you? Your conscience has been dimmed by the evil of your acts. Who am I? Mark you well this torch I light. Now mark you also, my God. This black garment I wear and upon which you had impressed the wicked lip. Stop you. Hester. I, Satan's magistrate, Hester Randolph. You are listening to Inner Sanctum, brought to you by... Glad we've got some Broma Seltzer home. More and more people are turning to Bromo Seltzer all the time because it fights headache fast and fights it all three ways. First, it quickly fights the pain of the headache itself. Then it soothes upset stomach and jumpy nerves that may often team up with a headache. That's right, folks. Bromo Seltzer does three jobs fast and pleasantly. Just put a teaspoonful of Bromo Seltzer in a glass and add water. It fizzes immediately, sparkling and refreshing, ready to help your headache all three ways. Why wait, folks? Keep that familiar blue bottle handy at home and at your place of business. Yes, friends, it's smart to be prepared for headaches at all times with Bromo Seltzer. It's on sale at all drugstores. Get a bottle today or tomorrow. Simply ask for... Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo Seltzer, Bromo That has to character. You know, that's the way a dame gets when she's burned up. Makes a specter of herself. Mm. You know, folks, I kind of feel sorry for old Judge Foster. When Hester showed up, the poor guy didn't know which way to turn. Uh, I mean, to turn away which which. They should have believed Sarah Seaton. She sure had Hester dead, or rather alive, to write. Yes, indeed, it's a wise descendant who knows her own forebears. Particularly... The grave-minded one. Hmm. <laughs> well, now, let's get back to our flaming fable. See what's cooking for the next stanza. Paul. Paul, wake up. Hmm? Paul, please, wake up. Oh, sir. What's the matter, darling? I've just had a terrible dream. I'm afraid. No, easy, dear. Easy. I, I dreamt that Judge Foster was killed tonight. By Hester. You did warn Judge Foster, didn't you, Paul? Yes, yes, of course, sir. <clears throat> Where are you going, dear? I'm getting dressed. I'm, I'm going down to tell the judge myself. You are staying here. Oh, please, now, please let me go. It means a man's life. You heard what Dr. Norton said, dear. Under no circumstances are you to leave the house. 
You're to talk to no one. Why am I being kept here like a prisoner? Why don't you let me speak to... Oh, what, what was that? Sounded like a door banging in the wind. Yes. There it is again. It's in the rear of the house. Didn't you lock that back door? Mm -hmm. I'm sure I did. I'd better see what happened. Wait, I'm going with you. I'd better turn on a light here in the kitchen. No, you won't have to. I can see. It's the door, all right. Guess I must have forgotten to spring the latch to that. Paul! Sarah, Out there. By the trees at the end of the lawn. I thought I saw a figure. All right, just stay here, dear. I'll be right back. No one out here, Sarah. You sure? Positive. Probably just a shadow. Oh! There's someone right here! Sarah! Sarah! What happened? Sarah. Where are you? Sarah! She was standing here, Sheriff. Right here at the back door when I heard her scream. And there wasn't a sign of her when you got back here at the door? Not a sign of her. Well, folks just don't vanish into thin air, Mr. Seaton. She must be around here someplace. I got to find her before it's too late. Too late? What do you mean by that? I, I don't know, really. I, I, I have a feeling that... Oh, now, you're not going to tell me about dead witches returning, too, are you? Don't tell me you believe in that stuff. I don't know what to believe. Sheriff, is that you, Sheriff? Yes, who's there? You'd better come with me, Sheriff. I just discovered something on the side of the road, about a mile away. Mr. Seaton, I, I think you'd better wait here. What is it, Dr. Norton? What have you found? I'd rather you'd wait, as I said before, until we're sure. What are you trying to hide from me? I guess you'd better speak up, Doctor. If it's something that concerns Mr. Seaton, maybe he should know. All right, Sheriff. But I made the turn into the road. My headlights caught it in a ditch. I wasn't sure at first, so I stopped the car and got out. There was a body in the ditch. A charred body. This way, Sheriff. Over here to the right. Where, where, where is she? Easy now, Mr. Seaton. Right. Right here, Sheriff. Now, wait, I'll switch on the flashlight. There. Sarah. Wait. Just a moment, Mr. Seaton. Dr. Norton has made a mistake. What? This corpse isn't your wife. I can tell by that ring. It's the ring that Judge Foster always wore. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes, Sheriff. Any news yet? Well, why can't your men find her? It's been six hours already. No, I haven't heard a word. Yes. Please call me as soon as you hear anything, will you? Who's there? Who is it? Oh, open the door. Hurry. Sarah. Yes, yes, please let me in. Oh, Sarah, Sarah, thank the Lord you're all right. Darling, where have you been? What happened to you? Wait, lock the door quickly. You... She doesn't know I've come back. She's still looking for Who? me. Who? Hester. She was out there, Paul. That's why I ran from the house. She called to me from the road, made me go with her. Uh, go where? To the cemetery. She kept me there, torturing me, begging me to change places with her. Darling, you're not making a stand. Please, please, believe me. We've got to get away from here tonight, right now. She'll kill me if we don't. She wants my life for the one she never lived. Now, stop it. Stop. Now, get hold of yourself. There is no such woman as Hester Randolph. But I saw her. I spoke to her. The woman you saw is somebody else, somebody living, who wants you to believe that she's Hester. She wants everybody to believe it. But why, Paul, why? Because she's a cold-blooded murderess. She's killed two people already, and she's trying to drive you out of your mind completely. But then who? Who could it be? I wasn't sure before. Now I'm almost positive. Dr. Norton. Dr. Norton? Now, you saw this, Hester, Sarah. What was she like? Oh, like a ghost. Hmm? Like a shadow in the light. You, you can see her face, and yet you can see through it, beyond. No. That was just an illusion created by the night there. Oh. And perhaps some other tricks of a 
clever, scheming woman. You'll see. I'll prove that Dr. Norton is... That's the back door. That's blown open again. Leave it. I've got to get out of here. No, no, you stay here. I'm going to see who opened that door. Please, hurry. Don't leave me alone so long. Please, the moment. Paul. What, what is it, Sarah? Don't come in here. What's the matter? Don't come in here. Please, dear. Yes, Sarah. Look out. I've got the gun out of the desk. I've got to kill her. Sarah. Sarah. Are you all right? I've killed her, Paul. She won't torture me anymore. I've killed Hester. She came toward me and I fired. Sarah, there's no one in this room, dear. Over there. In the hall. She's there. Where? I don't see that. Good Lord, you've broken the mirror. What? You shot at yourself. No. It can't be. I can't be her. And yet I saw her face. But it was my face, too. Sarah. It was you. You all the time. I am... Hester, fair gentleman, it is warming to have such a friend as you to stand beside me in this mockery of justice. Oh, Sarah, Sarah. Run. Sarah. Run as fast as you can, Paul. I was wrong. I haven't killed her. Run. Sarah, I've got to help you. I've got to explain to you that you... But I'm not, Sarah. Not anymore. Can't you see who I am? Can't you see who's taken my place? Sarah, listen to me. I love you. Please, please, come back to me. Sarah's gone. Now I can live the years they took from me. Sarah. See in my hand this pistol. He will bid it, I say. He will come with me. Still no answer, Sheriff. No answer, Dr. Norton. I can't understand it. Mr. Seaton was home when I called just 15 minutes ago. I warned you, Sheriff, to have that house closely watched. Well, I can't do a hundred things at once. I've got every available deputy out looking for Mrs. Seaton. Don't you realize she may have gone back to their house? Don't you realize that she's the one who might be Hester? Mrs. Seaton? Hester? What the deuce are you talking about? I'm talking about dual personality. Mrs. Seaton is suffering from a nervous breakdown. And it's entirely possible that she's the one who killed Griffin and Judge Foster. Well, you should have told me this before, Doctor. Come on, we're getting right over to the Seaton house. Here, Paul. They buried Hester's body here. Dishonored and unnamed. But, Paul, you believe in my innocence? Yes, sir. we better go back there. Back? Yes, to the house. It's very cold here. It's cold everywhere, Paul. I feel the chill of death coming near me. You and I are going back. Back through time. To an age where no one can harm us. This torch I hold. To free us forever. No, wait. Now, Sarah, please, listen. Now, try to understand, dear. You... In your mind, the flames will be of no pain. I know. Because I've been through such a death before. No. Now, Sarah, wait. <laughs> Oh, that's just going. Oh, Mr. Seaton, Sarah. are you all right? <laughs> yes. Looks like we got here just in time. Oh, she's going from me. Forever. Oh, oh Sarah. She's dead, Mr. Seaton. I'm sorry, Mr. Seaton. Sheriff, what is it? What's the matter? Look, it's the headstone. I... I didn't notice that before. It's been recut. Oh, what do you mean? Well, don't you see what it says? Hester Randolph, a lost soul. Born October 13, 1759. Died September 12, 1949. Hey, have you had your personalities? it lately. <laughs> you see what happens when a dame gets her dates mixed up? Poor Hester. She didn't know whether she was coming or going to the grave. Now, look, if you should be in 
An old New England cemetery some night, and one of the headstones should move. Don't be frightened. It's probably just Hester coming up for a hot date again. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's no parting moral attached to tonight's tale. I'll just leave you with your own thoughts. As horrible as I hope they are. <laughs> Friends, it's so foolish to suffer with an ordinary headache when Bromo Seltzer gives you such fast, pleasant, three-way relief. It's true, Mr. Weiss. Bromo Seltzer is so pleasant to take, and it works so fast to help your headache all three ways. Yes, Bromo Seltzer speedily fights the headache pain itself. Then it goes right to work to soothe the upset stomach and jangled nerves that often may team up with a headache. Try it next time you get a headache. Prove to yourself just how fast it works to help your headache all three ways. We've tried a lot of headache products, but it's Bromo Seltzer from now on for our family. You'll say the same thing, too, once you've discovered Bromo Seltzer. So get a bottle today and be prepared at all times to fight a headache fast all three ways. It's smart to keep Bromo Seltzer both at home and at your place of business. That's right, folks. Remember, Bromo Seltzer gives you fast three-way help for a headache. It's on sale at all drugstores. Caution, use only as directed. If headaches recur or persist, see your doctor. Get Bromo Seltzer today and... Five, three, three-way Time to close that squeaking door for another seven-day rest until next week at this time when Bromo Seltzer brings you another Inner Sanctum Mystery directed by Hyman Brown. Oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is Hanged by Your Neck by Henry Kane. Next week, you'll hear a love story. It's all about a man who loves to kill and a woman who loves a murderer and a murderer who loves a woman. It's the eternal triangle, but dipped in blood. So won't you be with us when we take you on a honeymoon in a chamber of horrors? Mm. <laughs> Until next Monday, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm. This is Dwight Weist inviting you to tune in again next Monday at the same time to Inner Sanctum, which is brought to you for your entertainment every Monday by... <laughs> this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.